You gonna apologize or I'm gonna knock you out in front of all these people. Yeah, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to see footage that has never been released and a story that is crazier than shit. <laughs> Cause you told me you was gonna do it. And I right. was like, Steve, if you're gonna do that, okay, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the story begins when I was arrested for multiple felonies and locked up with $1.12 million bail in 2002. I was in the world famous Twin Towers Correctional Facility of Los Angeles. They said, don't worry, you're in good hands. This is Robert Downey Jr. block. We got all the celebrities in here and ODB of the Wu-Tang Clan is always in here. You're actually in his cell. And that was a big deal to me, man. I mean, I love ODB. He was the king of not giving a fuck. Way before Kanye did it, he stormed on stage at the VMAs to take over the mic. I went and bought me an outfit today that costed a lot of money today. You know what I mean? Because I figured that Wu-Tang was going to win. When he first got really rich and famous, he went in a stretch limo and brought MTV cameras to the welfare office to film him picking up a welfare check. How much money you got here? All right, we good to go. Come on. Then one night in 2004, there was a huge event in New York City, and both me and Old Dirty Bastard were performing at it. I was so excited, I went into ODB's show, and he's on stage with his pants down, dick out, and he's smoking something. I loved it so much. His crew welcomed me. Come on, boy, Steve -O! Steve -O! He's fully rapping, but a little bit hunched over. Then he's sitting on the drum riser with his blunt and the microphone, and he's out. And I just thought, that is my hero. And then tragically, later that year, my hero ODB passed away and it sucked. Not long after that, Method Man of the Wu-Tang Clan filmed with us for Wild Boys. We got along great. Bitches. <laughs> then came 2006, when the Wu-Tang Clan was headlining the Rock the Bells Festival and doing an ODB tribute during the show. I had to be there. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people here, and I'm gonna keep it dirty. Before the show, I told my plan to Method Man and RZA, I plan to get butt dirty ass naked. <laughs> And flip my balls back. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, dude. And then I'm gonna do a perfect backflip and land with a standing mangina. No, no. <laughs> but right before they went on stage, Method Man told me, "You can't do it. Someone's gonna beat you up." And my reaction was, "Dirty would love that." <laughs> it's the Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> Wu-Tang Clan takes the stage. The show is huge. I'm so excited to be there. <laughs> Plus, there's so many people on the stage, it's ridiculous. Then it's time for the ODB tribute, and they bring ODB's mom out on stage. They introduce me to her. Miss Jerry, this is Steve-O. This is one of your bastard sons right here. <laughs> and then Method Man gives me the mic. Watch out, everybody. Watch out, everybody. I give the crowd a very drunken, long-winded version of my jail story. I was in Los Angeles County Jail. Two felony charges and I was facing fucking eight years in prison, right? It goes on and on. They say, Steve-O, let me take a picture of your man. And on. <laughs> we got Tommy Lee in here. We got Christian Slater in here. We got Nick Dolce in here. You know who they said at the end of that fucking list? And they said an ODP's always in here. After rambling for minutes on end, I'm finally ready to do my stunt. The double back being my attorney dick. <laughs> I'm not gonna whip the double back, and I'm gonna do a double back flip. Sure enough, I end up totally naked, flip my junk back and forth, and catch it in a mangina. I do the backflip, and I am stoked. The crowd is confused but not as confused as the people on stage. This man is a fucking crackhead or something, man. I thought he got to do that 
You see? Then they break into Shimmy Ya by ODB. And I am so hyped because I just feel like I made my hero so proud. I'm certain that he's smiling down on me from heaven. <laughs> then all of a sudden, Raekwon of the Wu Tang Clan stops the show completely. He grabs me by my neck and drags me to the front of the stage. I didn't appreciate that. And I'm gonna tell you right now. In front of all these people, you're gonna apologize or I'm gonna knock you out in front of all these people. I'm not playing straight up, that was disrespectful, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready to fuck you up. So you better apologize right now, and I'm going to jail straight up. I've never considered myself a tough guy, but even I was surprised by what a bitch I was in that moment. <laughs> hey, I apologize, dude. I mean, I honestly, did not mean any disrespect. I came here because I love doing it. I'm sorry. Yo, apologize to his mom. Your mom, can you come here for a minute, please, mom? Then he made me apologize to ODB's mom. I will tear this nigga the fuck up. I don't give a fuck who he is. After that, I was allowed to go. And security told us that I really should go because I was definitely not safe. Of course, I was totally humiliated by the experience. And ever since then, I've done everything I can to express that I meant no disrespect. I really tried to make it right. I talked to Method Man. For all the, the stuff I, I, I do, I've never been the guy who tried to offend people or, or upset people, you know? I talked to Riza. Your way of expressing art is your way, you know what I mean? And as artists, we all find different ways to do it, and you did it. I've reached out to Raekwon to try to make it right with him as well, but Raekwon is not interested in talking to me about it. You know, I was shocked, you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, nigga, this nigga's on stage naked. If I ever do get the chance to meet Raekwon, I hope that we can be cool. But if he makes me apologize again, I absolutely will very quickly. And Wu-Tang forever.